Okay, so I'm just now pulling in and it looks like my spot is wide open. This is the best time of the year. It's nice and cool and it's the best time to camp too because it does get cold at night but usually the cookie cutters aren't out there. That's my spot where I want to set up my antenna. Okay, so here's the deal. I'm just gonna work out of the back of my van and get this set up as fast as possible. So I've got my NVIS antenna in here, 891 giant bio -ino battery, notepad, cable, 24 foot painter's pole. Yeah, I know it's a pain in the ass to carry a huge pole like this, but it's also convenient and exactly what I wanted for this. I've got a chair here, don't really need it. And I've also got my this is my uh, utility pack with uh, connectors and things like that. I've, I've decided to start throwing that in here. All right, let's take a look at the NV. This is a commercial product that I bought. And I found this case for something else, a light set or something. So the ends of the antenna need to be splayed out. And so I brought this. Um, to connect to the ground. I've got a hammer here for the stakes and here's my antenna, the commercial. So you're going to need four stakes for each of the ends, the ballon, and here here you need is where you would connect to the ground. Let's get this set up and then I'll give you a rundown of what we're doing. So you can see that there's four legs like that. This is the top-down view. And so you have a 25 foot and a 25 foot and a 38 and a 38. So what I went ahead and did was I laid it out in the X pattern that it makes, pretty much. And they meet in the middle. I'm going to take the ballon now and connect it in the proper configuration. At that point I'm going to put it on the painter's pole and raise it up. Then I'll spread the legs out. As you can see it's fall. It's really pretty out here. This is a good spot. I have to drive for 45 minutes to get out here, but it's worth it because I get all this privacy and space. I really do like Missouri at times. <laughs> so I've got all four of the wires laid out in their proper um, configuration according to the directions. And so you put on one side you have two wires, a long and a short, and the other you have a long and a short. So there's only two links, 38 feet and 23 feet or something like that. Um, but I'm set up here now. I gotta raise this up and spread out the legs. Okay, so I'm at 15 feet with this painter's pole, which can go to 24 feet, which I'll use in some something else. Um, now comes one of the problems I never really planned out. First of all, I just kind of hacked that on there, making sure not to touch the pole itself. Um, I've got all four wires attached. I'm ready to raise this mast. The problem I have still is I don't have a good way to stake the pole in the ground. So I'm just going to attach it to the van or something for now and just try and get something just thrown up for now, but I'm still working on that problem. Okay, first time setup. It's a little ugly. So I pulled too tight on the painter's pole that way and I don't have a good way to attach it. I knew that coming here and I did it anyway, but I'm going to work on that problem, fixing that problem later. Um, I'm just going to get on the air because people could start coming and camping. I don't know. There could be nobody here all night or there could be 20 people. So I'm going to leave it as it is and just tune it up and see what happens. Um, I know it's ugly, but this is the first time I've set it up. Um, I made a mistake. I went over there and I couldn't pound into those rocks. So you make mistakes like that and you learn. I, I mean, I could loosen that up and pull it further that way. But, I mean, do I really need to? I mean, I'm, I know it's ugly. Let's just put it that way. I need to get going, though. Okay, I started to panic. I had it in data mode. I forgot I had it in data mode. I'm like, well, I'm not getting anything out. Um, so I tuned it up. Tune, it tunes really well. It's in Minnesota.
frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar, CQ, CQ from Missouri, testing NVIS antenna. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ, N9YO, CQ, CQ from Missouri, testing NVIS, Missouri, NVIS, please give me signal report. CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ, N9YO calling CQ using NVIS antenna in Missouri. NVIS antenna in Missouri, signal report please. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar, N9YO in Missouri calling CQ, CQ. Okay, so this is interesting. Ron cannot hear me, but I can hear him in Virginia. Listen to this. Ron is going to send me a message from Virginia, and I'm going to try to talk to him. I got a call sign there. What was that again, please? K3PYT. K3PYT. This is November Contact. I'm over here near uh, St. Louis. I'm real curious to find out where you are. Slowly. November 9, Yankee Oscar, N9YO. November 9, Yankee Oscar, K3, PYT, that's Kilo 3 Pacific, Yankee Tango, South Central Pennsylvania, South Central Pennsylvania. South Central Pennsylvania. Well, I'm near, uh, I'm near St. Louis, and I'm using an NVIS antenna, which is supposed to be short range short range so i'm i'm surprised i'm pretty happy though thank you for coming back you're my first contact today all right thank you so much for that uh signal report you're coming in pretty nicely too and uh, I haven't had much luck today. I've been calling CQ for about an hour and you're the first one, so I don't know. What was your antenna again? Okay, so I think it's doing pretty good. I'm gonna keep on calling CQ. Thank you for that report. Alright, so I made a contact, and it was my first one. Uh, been calling CQ a lot, and that was Pennsylvania from Missouri. That's about right. Seems a little far, though. Yeah, your setup sounds like it's, you could hear just about anything. You could hear a pin drop anywhere, so it sounds really good. You've got something going there. The NBIS is at only 15 feet high, and the legs are 38 feet and 28 feet out. So it's like a, it makes like an X. But I used that. That was my dipole. I used that as a learning, uh, learning experience. After only, after only 62 years in ham He's radio, I'm to still me. learning. So that was three. We'll see you later. N9 Yankee Oscar from K4TO. Yeah, if, if we'll never quit learning. Then it quits being fun, right? That's why I like to try different things. So real nice to meet you, seven three seven three, and we'll see you on the air. Yeah. Good night, Tom. K4TO, clear. Woo! There's two of them. All right. So he had a, he has an amazing antenna dipole at 105 feet. I mean, he could probably hear anything I put out. Um, I'm only at 15 feet, and he's at 105 feet. Um, he was putting out 100 watts using a dipole, and he's in Kentucky. Um, that was 5:05 p.m. Same same frequency. I'll try to make one more contact. I'm sorry, I had the camera out there when I was I was trying to get a wide shot, and I got that. So you can see how this antenna spreads out. It, it has a wide footprint. We were going from here all the way over there 
right? My lens is not a wide lens, all the way over there, and then way back into that grass over there. So it has a wide footprint, but it's pretty, it's only 15 feet, so it's real easy. You know, someone has a 105 foot antenna, and you only need to put 15. The hard part is staking it down. That kind of sucks, especially when you do it in the rocks. I'm real happy to make two contacts right in a row like that. You just have to keep calling CQ and things change on you. CQ, CQ, CQ from November 9, Yankee Oscar in Missouri, in 9 yo calling CQ, looking for signal report, please. New antenna, looking for signal report from Tom, in 9 yo November 9, Yankee Oscar in Missouri. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar calling CQ, CQ, looking for signal report in Missouri. CQ, CQ, N9YO calling CQ, looking for signal report in Missouri. CQ, CQ, November 9, Yankee Oscar, signal report in Missouri, please. Thank you. Whiskey 9 X ray Delta Echo. Thank you for coming back. I, I'm guessing you're in Illinois. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay, name here is Tom. Tango Oscar Mike. Tango Oscar Mike. You are coming in fairly weak here into Missouri using an in NVIS antenna, a 15 foot NVIS antenna at about 50 watts. And you're coming in, but pretty weak. Name here is Tom. Uh, go ahead. Okay, thanks for that report. I really appreciate it. It looks like I'm going to the northeast. I'm hitting Milwaukee. I hit Kentucky and Pennsylvania. Looks like everything is going to the northeast for some reason. I'll have to try and figure that out. But anyway, thank you, 737373. All right, guys, I did it. Um, I'm, I got three contacts right in a row. I felt like I'm really cold right now. The, the temperature just dropped and it was so hot earlier I thought I could get away with I thought I could get away with not having to worry. Um, the downside of this antenna, let's just go over it. So here's here's the cordage and the stake. And the downside with this stuff is it's not really meant to be wound and unwound and wound and unwound. It kinks up on you pretty bad. You can kind of, if you look, you can kind of see the kinks. Um, I would like, what I might do is replace this wire with easier wire to wind up so I can do this again. And then take this wire and leave it at my mom's house in Oklahoma and just have that antenna there for when I go to the ranch there, I can use that and not have to carry it. So then I'd have two of them, but I like this portable. Um, that's a problem. I'm gonna get, they have these things that you can drive onto with like a tube. I could make one, I could like weld one or something, and then that would just stick in there and I wouldn't have to worry. But I, I wonder if the car itself reflects, causes reflective issues because, you know, it's just maybe, maybe this giant metal car underneath this is, I'm, all three of my contacts were to the northeast from Missouri, Kentucky, Wisconsin, Milwaukee, and Pennsylvania. All of them were to the northeast, which is weird. And that would be the west over there. So I don't know why that would be north. I'm coming, I'm going, 
I'm pointing that way for some reason. Anyway, the downside of this antenna is all the wires you have to wind up. Now, keep in mind, you don't have to have all four. You can just have two. This would have worked probably just as well with only two. Um, I don't, you don't have to put all four up. I've seen this done before. Um, I like this style antenna. What I might do is do what I just said. I'll have two, I think that's 38 feet and then 23 feet. So this one is short and then it's long. This one here is short and then that one is long. Um, the pain in this is having to stake that down, stake that down, stake that down, and stake that down, and get that pole set, set up. So always it's easier to just to throw one wire into a tree. I know that. I'm not surprised. I'm not telling you this is a surprise. I know that already. But I wanted to try this out and it's interesting. And I'm also going to keep doing, I'm just going to keep using this because it's very interesting. I just got to make a way to make it more portable and easy to set up. Um, also I had to cut, I had to figure out how long to cut these, the twine this time. Now I can just leave it on there and roll it up. Um, yeah, I might just buy another ballon and then I'll have two of these and then create some wire and make my own for the second time. That way I'll have one here and one there. All right, guys, I'm freezing cold. <laughs> it, it's probably about 40 right now and I just, I've been in this shirt just kind of sitting out here shivering. Now comes the dreaded part. I got to wind all this up so it doesn't get all kinky. Ugh.